So on these problems with the parametric equations, uh, you don't have to always have radians or some angles here. It might be a problem like this. You want to make sure you know how to do both kinds here on uh, number 11. The process is still the same. Take the value for t, plug it in here, and we get our corresponding values for x and y that we're going to plot. So let's do that. On this one, we're going to have negative 8 we put in there for t. And so x equals negative 8 plus 2, which is negative 6 we get for that one. For this one, we have 8 over negative 8, which is equal to negative 1. So our coordinate would be negative 6, negative 1. Next, we do this one, negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. 8 over negative 6, it, we get a fraction of negative 4 thirds. So we get negative uh, 4 and negative 4 thirds. It's really easy to accidentally grab the value for t instead of the value for x, so make sure you're using x and y values when you write your points down here. Uh, next one, negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. 8 divided by negative 4, the t value, is negative 2. So we get negative 2 and negative 2. Uh, next we got negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And we do 8 divided by the t value, negative 2, is negative 4. So 0, negative 4. And then finally we have negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 8 divided by negative 1 is negative 8. So we get 1, negative 8. So now this completes our, our table. Uh, and so all these values we have here we want to now plot. So I'll leave these up here and erase the rest of the table so we have some space and we're going to uh, plot these. So I have negative 6 and negative 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 6 and negative 1 will be starting from right here. That's your first point we're going to plot. Then we're going to do negative 4 and negative 4 thirds. If you think of it as a decimal it's about negative 1.3. So we're going to do negative 4 and negative 1.3 will be about right there. Next we have negative 2, negative 2. Negative 2 and negative 2 will be right there. And then we have 0, negative 4. So on the y-axis here it will be at across there at negative 4. And finally we have 1 and negative 8. So 1, negative 8 will be here. And so we have a line that runs like this and we have our it's moving this direction so we put our arrows arrowheads on it now you don't want to have this continue and and go like this and put a, a line down there the graph does not go that far because it's only using the values for t that are listed that we originally did so only on, the graph is only going to appear between here and here we don't want to put arrowheads going in each direction because we're only graphing it on these specific values for t. So that's why you don't want to have it extended. You want to leave it like that. And don't forget to put the directional arrows. You need those on there for your answer. So this is going to be the, the correct graph. So now it asks for us to eliminate the parameter. It's also the same thing as writing the rectangular equation. Okay, now originally for this we had x equals t plus 2 and we have y equals 8 over t. What we want to do is we're going to take this equation, we're going to solve for t, and then we're going to put it in this equation and eliminate the parameter, eliminate the t, and leave our answer in terms of y equals. So for this one, if we solve for t, we get subtract the 2, and we get t is equal to x minus 2. We're going to put that into here, which means we our, our answer is going to be this. So we get 8 over x minus 2, so we're basically just seeing part of the part of that rational function that we have here. There would be normally be an asymptote at uh, at 2 there, so you'd have one piece down here, another piece up there if you saw the whole graph, but because we're only looking at specific values for t, that's why you only see the small portion.